Hey guys, today we are watching a video of Gary T defacing four Force of Wales because he disagrees with the artist Teresa Nielsen on political beliefs. A while ago, Teresa Nielsen was in a sticky situation because people had screenshotted that she had liked or retweeted some very conservative people on social media. So this is 100% political. And Gary Thompson, if you don't know who he is, he's one of the best Magic players. He was one of the original members of the Magic MPL. And he quit. He gave up $75,000. He gave up his ability to get invited to these Mythic Championships that are $750,000 of prizes for 68 of them. And he gave it up on principle. So back then, and I still support Gary, it feels very much like the movie Jerry Maguire, who's with me. And none of the other pros went with him. He was eventually replaced by either Jessica Epstein or Savaz. One of the two replaced him. At the time, Yuya Watanabe was also being replaced. So those two exchanged for Jessica and Saviz, who are the most criticized members of the NPL by yours truly. Saviz, not so much, but Jessica, kind of, based on her ELO. This is pretty silly, in my opinion. So Teresa Nielsen and her wife, so Teresa Nielsen is an active member of the LGBT community. She is a lesbian. That doesn't mean she cannot agree with something that a conservative says. Just like when I can agree on immigration policies that a liberal says, because I am pro-immigration, but I'm conservative definitely financially, that's how I grew up. I, and I'm conservative on several other issues. But that does not mean that if a Democrat tweets something that I agree with and I like it, I agree with everything they've ever said. And that's the scenario here. We have a lot of people who are using social media to basically go after Teresa Nielsen and they screenshotted stuff and Teresa Nielsen, let me make this very clear, has never said any of this stuff herself. At most, she has liked or retweeted when other people have said something that she agrees with and maybe that person, she agrees with just that opinion. And Twitter is a fascinating place for Magic the Gathering. It has dominated. If you want to know why we have the NPL, why we have so much, quote, diversity, it's because of Twitter. I think Magic the Gathering, Wizard of the Coast, listens to Twitter way too much and read it way too much. Gary Thompson is defacing $400 of Force of Wills because he doesn't like the artist. That's insane. That's almost as insane as the opposite. He doesn't like that, that the artist liked and retweeted some conservative people. That's the reason he's doing that. The madness of this is on the reverse. People have lit on fire Ka Callen, Callen, Colin Kaepernick. It's been a while since his name has been in the media. Jersey, a uh, Nike jersey, Nike merchandise, because they did not agree with Nike sponsoring him and making that TV commercial. And that's because he's very liberal. So it happens on both sides. It's just so weird to see in Magic the Gathering, which is a card game that should be non-political. So if you, your question is, no, I don't believe, if you're trying to argue that I don't believe Magic is political, well, what's happening right now from Gary T, uh, original member of the MPL representing Magic, is the same as what's happening with Colin Kaepernick and his Nike commercial. And then all of a sudden people are ripping their Nike jerseys and Nike things. And the best example I have of how silly this is, and truly it is quite silly, is when LeBron James left Cleveland. LeBron James is a basketball player. Hopefully you know who he is. Um, he left Cleveland to go to Miami, and people burned his jerseys, and they said they hated him. The owner wrote a semi-racist letter uh, with a mentality that is kind of bad. 
and you would never expect LeBron James to ever come back. But he came back. Those same people who burnt his jersey, they bought new ones, right? And they were the same people at the parade and clapping. And it's all very silly to me, um, especially this gesture of destroying cards just because the card has illustration from someone who you didn't like that retweeted someone you really didn't like. I think it comes down to this. Um, when you have people like Ally Encampment and other people, Emma is a big one, who are incentivized either via money, incentivized for money, the money that they can win from the MPL, or incentivized for likes and favorism. A lot of these special invites, they don't have any following. And I went on to one particular example at the very end where the person has only 200, 300 followers on Twitter, but this post about how bad Teresa Nielsen is as a person goes viral. And even before it goes viral, how many followers did they have before then? I, probably not very much. And they're taught that, hey, to gain subscribers, to gain things, what I need to do is I need to make these outlandish statements and then people will like me and they will like it and they'll comment and they'll favor it and they'll reshare and retweet. Um, I'm going to show you somebody who spent probably 50 tweets on Teresa Nielsen, mainly just talking to herself, and then it popped off. And I don't like this. I don't like how you are pointing out that Nielsen's wife, Don Rickborg, is now the evidence of Nielsen's begotted views. Look, your, your spouse or your significant other does not share the same political views as you, Right? So for you to use evidence of, oh, hey, your spouse believes this. You must believe this as well. Or, hey, your daughter believes this. Like, or your son or your cousin or your aunt. And that's just, you're, you're doing it for the likes on Twitter. And honestly, that's very offensive to me because it is using social media as a tool for social justice Maybe that's where the social war came from, right? Maybe it's, I think that's very offensive to assume that, hey, just because you're married to someone, you have the same, and that's someone that you're married to is liking conservative posts on Twitter. This is some type of indemnification against you. I don't think so. And maybe I'm crazy, but a lot of the people who are getting banned in magic I might make another video about Unsleeved Media. Good on him, you know, the quarter, and good on him for really just getting rid of Magic and becoming what he is now. He's two times the size of Tolarian, I think. I know he's definitely bigger than Tolarian Community College. I know his videos get, you know, six to eight times as many views during the same period of time. And good on him. They banned the dude for life, and he was one of their biggest spenders. I would say Jeremy, based on what I know about him, and I actually didn't meet him in IHOP, he spent a lot of money buying Magic cards at the time and promoting Magic. And for them to ban him for life while they allow Emma, who gets other people banned, this is like ridiculous, right? Imagine playing Magic, joining a Facebook group, forgetting you joined a Facebook group, and then suddenly everyone in this private Facebook group is banned because someone went there to screenshot. Teresa Nielsen is entitled her, to her own opinions. That should be separate from artwork. A lot of these social media people don't understand that. So if I, because they don't have a job. I think it comes down to these people just don't have jobs. Like it, it's so astounding to me. You can work at a company and you can work with the most liberal person. And then your, let's say your social media person is super out there liberal, but your developer is super conservative. That can work at a business level. And that's why you have a business. Not everyone in my company agrees with everything I say. And some of them are vehemently against some projects that we had. But that doesn't mean that they're going to go A, attack me, B, go on a rampage. No, we just deal with it internally. And that's the same with any baseball team, basketball. Anytime you have to work with a group of people, they're going to have different, different political views than you. The larger that group is, the more likely that's going to happen. A lot of these content creators, their entire job is 
sitting at home in the basement somewhere writing some random article about how this card's going to go up in price or making some deck tech or playing red deck wins or streaming at home by themselves. They're not using social media the way, in my opinion, it should be used, which is to promote happiness and health and all this good stuff. They're using it as a weapon of screenshotting. I mean, it comes down to, hey, I'm going to screenshot it and then you're done. Oh, I'm sorry. And a lot of them are making this up because when you ask them, where are these screenshots? They're like, oh, well, I deleted them because I didn't know better. No, <laughs> MF, you don't have the screenshots. And this whole, co I mean, if you imagine Emma being rewarded and she was grandly rewarded now as, you know, a M MPL special invite. If you imagine people being rewarded because they are getting other Magic players banned and private Facebook groups, and this is the way to excel in Magic as a content creator, then you're going to have a lot of people attack Teresa Nielsen. And this is exactly what happens because they saw this as the same opportunity they had on Wu. So many of the women Magic players saw this as an opportunity to sacrifice Wu. To I don't know what, but they basically took away his pro tour. He already had plane tickets, and there were some tax considerations that he may or may not have paid. They took something of extreme value away from him because he was a moderator of a Facebook group that he he never commented in a post. He, they don't have any evidence. They just have relationship evidence. It's almost similar to when they say, oh, Don, your wife is very conservative, Teresa Nielsen. That means I had to deface every card of your image on it. What? Like here, the problem is, and it's a paradox, right? The problem, it's the inclusion paradox, which is a psychology principle. When you include everybody, you're going to include some people who are very extreme um, because you have to include everybody. Um, and because those really extreme people have loud voices and the silent majority is just kind of sitting there, they're going to scream and yell. And then the society in general will be like, oh, hey, good idea. Let's vote them into office. It's the same thing we see with politics. Um, the person who is, hey, we should give free, we should uh, forgive all student loans. Do you realize like how big of a tax that would be? And you do realize that poor people would be most disadvantaged because the people with the high student loans are people like the mana source who's paying six five hundred dollars a month in student loans with only like four hundred dollars a bit being interest. Of course he's gonna want free student loans, but the reason he's allowed to have student loans is because he came from a wealthy family. He came from middle, I, you know, he still lives at home, but they had to have enough money to send him to that school. People who don't have money, people who are at the poorest demographic, they don't go to college. They don't go to fancy private universities. They go to community college and then they transfer in. They don't have the same opportunity. They don't take SAT classes that cost thousands of dollars. They don't have the opportunities the Manosaurus had for someone to incur, go to NYU, uh, not scholarship, I was a missions at NYU, yet they had money. They had money. It's a very expensive private university. You don't have to go to NYU. And the people at the low demographics, they tend not to go to private universities. They tend to go to community college or a state university. This is fact. This is data. So the person that it benefits most is a person who went to... Uh, Boston University, right, AOC, who has massive student loans, and the only reason she could go to Boston University is because her parents have money, right? So the whole, oh, let's do it for the poor people, no. Poor people don't have that many student loans. It's the millennials who have rich parents who have student loans and who don't want to pay their student loans. So anyway, that's kind of a rant on student loans. But my point is when you preach something and you say, hey, diversity, hey, non-binary, hey, 
you are representing a position that is very loud and very opinionated, but it's definitely not the majority. The majority of Magic players will and will always be white males. I hate to tell Wizard of the Coast this because clearly they don't know. Oh, this is another example. She has 325 followers and she blows up after attacking Teresa Nielsen. Well, it works in reverse too, doesn't it? So that's kind of my role in this community is to be a defender of people like Teresa Nielsen. I really don't see the association. Yes, you may like some ideas, and I do like ideas that Democrats have on immigration sometimes, and I will you know, like them and I'll post them on LinkedIn or something. It doesn't mean that I agree with their entire platform, right? You can have a good idea from a bad person. You can have a bad idea from a good person, like Beto O'Rourke. Ha ha ha. Bye.